Hello Grade 11s. In this lesson, we introduce the theorem which considers angles subtended by chords. After that, we will apply to some examples. Remember that theorems are intended to be learnt in a particular order. This is the way Euclid sets out his book, The Elements, where one theorem logically followed on to the next. This theorem's proof depends on other theorems that we have already proved. We switch over to John and Kanya to take us through the proof. This is what the theorem statement says. The angles subtended by a chord at the circumference of a circle on the same side of the chord are equal. We can call this the angles in the same segment theorem. We need a circle and a chord. Then we need to create at least two angles on the circumference that are on the same side of the chord. We need a circle. Here is its center, O, and a chord. Let's make that AB. We can put two other points on the circumference, say P and Q. We make sure that they are both on the same side of AB. We can create angles AQB and APB by joining the points to A and B. Do you see the shape created by the overlapping triangles? We sometimes call this theorem the bow tie or butterfly theorem because of the clear shapes created, just as a useful way to remember it. Here is the construction needed for this proof. We need to create an angle at O. This should remind you of the theorem about the angle at the center being double the angle at the circumference. Look at the diagram now and see if you can prove that the angle at Q is equal to the angle at P. This is quite an easy proof. The angle at O is twice the angle at Q and it is also twice the angle at P. So P and Q must be equal angles. We have used the previous theorem to prove this one. Here is the formal proof. Given a circle center O with chord AB and P and Q on the circumference, on the same side of the chord, join AQ, QB, AP, and PB. Join OA and OB. Required to prove that angle AQB equals angle APB. Proof. Angle AOB equals twice angle AQB because the angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference. Angle AOB also equals twice angle APB for the same reason. So 2 times AQB equals 2 times APB. And so AQB equals APB. When you use this reason in a proof, you can shorten it to angles in the same segment. Look at the diagram again. Do you see that P and Q are both subtended by chord AB and are in the same segment? Look at the statement of this theorem again. Can you work out what its converse will be? This is the converse. If a line segment subtends equal angles at two other points on the same side of the line, then these four points lie on a second. As John was saying, the proof of the converse is not needed to be known for examination purposes. But we need to be able to apply the results in proofs and writers. This theorem has a result which is known as the corollary. It states equal chords subtend equal angles. Let's use a diagram to illustrate this. We can see in the graphic that chord AB subtends angle C and chord PQ subtends angle R. Chord AB is equal in length to chord PQ. This means the angle C is equal to angle R. The converse is also true. Equal angles would be subtended by chords of equal length. We go back to John and Kanya 
to show us an application of the theory so far. Yeah, you need to make use of the parallel lines. If angle EIF is giving us 15 degrees, how does this help us to find X? Well, angle IFH is also 15 degrees because of alternate angles on parallel lines. Yes, and IFH and IGH are angles in the same segment, both subtended by the arc HI. To check this, you can put your two fingers on H and I and trace the lines through to angle G and then trace the lines through to angle F. What does that tell you about angle X? Well, that means angle X must be 15 degrees too. Good work. See why it's so important to know and understand each theorem. Thank you, John and Kanya. John is now going to take us through examination style questions using the last two theorems. The first question just requires a completion of the statement. We need to realize that this is often a hint as to which theory will be used in the subsequent questions. Over to you, John. Complete the statement below by filling in the missing weights so that the statement is correct. The angle subtended by a chord or arc at the center of a circle is what? I know. The angle subtended by a chord or an arc at the center of a circle is double the size of the angle at the circumference. Correct. Here is a tip. Since that was the first part of the question, it is likely that you will be using this theorem in the next part of the question. Here it is. In this diagram, O is the center of the circle and PT equals PR. Angle R1 is labeled as Y and angle O1 is labeled as X. The question is, express X in terms of Y. Have a look at the angles X and Y. Can you see any immediate link between them? Can you see other angles that are linked to either X or Y? Sure way to start. The best is to fill in whatever information you can on your diagram. If it's a circle diagram, start by checking for equal radii. OQ is equal to OR, equal radii. And um, PRT is isosceles. So that means angle Y equals angle T. Very good. Did you see that angle X is double the size of angle P1? Of course. It's the angle at the center equal to twice the angle at the circumference. Yes. Now, can you see a link from angle P1 to angle Y? P1 is the exterior angle of triangle PRT. So it is equal to angle Y plus angle T. And there is the link. We've already seen that those two angles are equal to each other. So we can say that angle P1 is double angle Y. That means then that angle X is two times double angle Y. In other words, angle X is four times the size of angle Y. Remember, just like the first part of the problem helped us solve this part, Finding X in terms of Y is probably something we will need to use in the next step of the question. Part three of the question asks, if TQ equals TR and X equals 120 degrees, calculate the measure of Y and the measure of R2. The measure of the angle is just the actual size in numbers. What do we already know, Kanya? X is four times Y. So if X is 120 degrees, Y will be 120 divided by four, which is 30 degrees. Excellent. What about the size of R2? We are given TQ equal to TR. So we will need to use this. We are also given a hint to draw QR to help us with this one. 
If you join QR, you have created a triangle QRT. We focus on this triangle because of the information that has just been given about TQ and TR. It is an isosceles triangle. What does that tell us, Kanya? The sum of the angles at Q are equal to the sum of the angles at R. Yes. To help us along, let's label the third angle at R as R3 and the angles at Q as Q1 and Q2. So angles Q1 plus Q2 equal angles R1 plus R2 plus R3. We already have angle T equal to 30 degrees. And we know the sum of the angles in a triangle is 180 degrees. So in triangle TQR, the angles at Q and at R add up to 180 degrees minus 30 degrees, which is 150 degrees. Seeing as they are equal to each other, we can now say that they are each half of 150 degrees, which is 75 degrees. Let's not forget that we are trying to find the size of R2 on its own. Take a look at R2. Are we any nearer to finding it? We know that R1 is 30 degrees. What about R3? It is a base angle of triangle QOR. And this triangle is isosceles because the radii OQ and OR are equal sides of the triangle. Mm. So Q2 and R3 are also equal. Good work, Kanye. X is 120 degrees. So Q2 plus R3 must be 60 degrees. And so R3 is half of this, which is 30 degrees. Now we just need to do the sums. 75 degrees at R equals 30, plus R2 plus 30. So R2 must be 15 degrees. We did it. Yes, well done. The whole exam question that we have just completed is worth 10 marks. To do a question like this one, you just need to know and use your theorems. Then you need to look for links between the angles asked for and the other angles in the diagram. John makes an important point. We need to learn our theorem in order to be able to link the angles given and the angles we need to find. Remember to try the task video at the end of this section. You will also be able to learn more about circle geometry on our website, mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Thank you for joining us, Grade 11s.